Thank you. Rock Time back on. Let's rock rock. Captain's Run with Angus Brayshaw. We're back. Uh, episode, don't know, haven't been counting. Uh, sponsored by Zurich. Uh, and also... Speculative. Groundbreaking oh. news. Uh, <laughs> fresh Arnott's have decided to jump on board. Uh, legally, I'm supposed to say that they haven't yet, um, <laughs> but we're we're just going to run with it uh, yep. because of the traction we managed to get shapes last weekend. Yeah, there's a bit to go over. Uh, first of all, I'm going to start with everyone would remember our shapes comparison, um, and that was groundbreaking work we were doing. And on, on the back of that, Arnott's have spawned an Instagram page for their shapes. So they didn't have one. Didn't have one. And I went to go message shape. Obviously, um, the people instantly asked on the conclusion of our podcast, yeah. where's the Barbie Onions flavoured shape? So I said, that's a good point. Went and asked. Yep. And instead of asking uh, Shape's Instagram page, I had to go right up the tree to Arnott's. So they've, in retaliation, made a new Instagram page for the shapes. And the first post was, what's the best shape? They had a comparison similar to what we did. Yep. So it's complete plagiarism. Uh, we'll be waiting for... Did this- we get tagged in it? I don't think we got tagged in them, but that's because we potentially didn't have an Instagram, account, which we'll get into later. We're going to get into that later, but um, so we've we've got the Barbie onions shape uh, in the works now. So what's Tangy Onion? Because I've not seen sure. That. So I've seen uh, that posted. the people, the good people at Demonland, their Instagram page have been they love whipping up uh, you know Barbie onions flavored different things. So. There was a chocolate, uh, yep. Cadbury chocolate, Barbie onions flavour, off the top of my head, a couple of other things. And when they whipped up the shape, they went with tangy onion. So I'm not sure that that, that's, well, I am sure that's not going to stick. It, yep. If it gets through, it'll be a Barbie onion flavour. But um, I must say, looks good though. this shape chat has got me back on shapes a bit. Yeah. Like I was already on shapes, but I've gone. And the biggest thing that I've found trying to rank shapes is I just don't have the other five as much as I have savoury because when yeah. you go to get a box you get your favourite yeah of course so I've made a conscious effort to get some other boxes good and cheddar's not that bad cheddar's not it's the bad it's the worst of a really really good bunch I think they're the best six biscuits at Coles but yeah. they're but it's the six you got to rank the... them one to six you know? and I think and it's interesting you say that I would think that I'm not sure what our viewership is whether it's in the millions or not yet but we've got <laughs> we would have I'm sure people listening in the exact same situation as you thinking well geez that's a good point Angus and Max why don't I go get more shapes I'd be genuinely interested to see how much we've moved the shape market and does that therefore make us movers and shakers like are we a big deal now which is where we've got to get to Arnott's and tell them about yeah. the fact that we're going to literally get them boxes off the shelf. Exactly. And I think that's what we've done. We've proved that. And uh, now we've what, what it's up to us to do now is to yep. capitalise. The iron's hot. Yep. We've got a strike. So we've whipped up a little Max and Angus's Insta page and we, we'll be working that those angles later. Yep. Well, we, can, we can do it now if you want. What's a, what are we, we've created an Instagram. We have, so um, we think it's uh, obviously necessary to become big, do- like bigger dogs in the podcast world. Yeah, and we feel like um, you guys been uh, you guys been the viewers, or well, the listeners, been able to tag us in all sorts of stuff. And, yep, um, and us being able to do some content. Yep, um, which would be very good for uh, the world we live in at the moment. Um, so what's the what's the tag? The tags captains run underscore yep. ca- captains underscore run and yeah i think we're following very much if you look at historical podcasts hamish and andy you've got a podcast yep. thing and we obviously had hamish on so we're, we're copying the blueprint yeah but um springboard for us to bigger and better things so we're on three followers now yep. <laughs> we're is, following three which is, people which is who you me and the melbourne football that's club. great for the melbourne football club to jump on us early they've jumped on. actually no it's not it's Benny Gibson. <laughs> we will bring that up <laughs> it's later. It's Benny Gibson. We, and we didn't follow him sorry, back, did we? I've just refreshed it. There's, we haven't followed him back. There's four followers. The We're fourth, not live, though. The fourth follower is someone called Zabrina. On you, Zabrina. So, yeah. Zabrina, there's a shout out. Good yeah. on you. You'll probably hear this. If you're following our Insta page, you'll probably listen. So, thank you for the support. But that's that's where we're going. I think yeah. we're trending globally. So, yeah. that's good. So, we think we're in the millions. We're on four on Instagram. But okay. we're getting there. We'll get okay, there. Okay, we played a game on the weekend. We played Collingwood. <laughs> we did. Um, we won. Uh, well, sorry, you won. Um, we won. I think I like to think we won the Hub Cup. Yeah, so yeah. And for those that listened to the podcast last week, we made it pretty clear that um, it was the Twin Waters Cup. Mm-hmm. Um, Big time. 
Uh, Melbourne and Collingwood, the only two AFL teams here now with North Melbourne leaving. Mm -hmm. um, so we do see them every day, and it was handy to get a little win against them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, little. It was 50-odd points would be a guess. Yeah, 50 G6, I think, 4,400. And it was um, from the stands. It was, a, it was honestly um, a great game to watch. Um, and yourself... The form of yourself since joining the podcast has mm. been um, very, there's very a correlation. Good to watch. Well, mate, I tell you what, we need we needed to lift from me. If we yeah. want to take this global, I've got to start playing good footy. So that's good to see. Uh, you sat next to Purdy, uh, so yeah, I did. That's a hard um, game for you to get through. Purdy's our CEO, and Purdy is. Uh, I'm a I'm a big fan of Gary Pert, and I love what he's brought to the hub. He's brought a he's brought a, a bit of um, fun to the hub, and he's 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 a great CEO. Political. He can talk through a game of footy. Yeah. yeah Are so you a footy talker? I'm not. I'm more of a watcher. Yeah. Um, but he is a big talker. Um, so I didn't mind sitting next to him um, because it's a great uh, way to see how the CEO watches a game of football. And um, he got me good seats. Oh, yeah. yeah That's he, what I was angry at. He got me courtside. You would have had a few to choose from. Yeah. Stadium wasn't packed. The, every, um, my brother was actually at the game and he oh, was yeah. up on level three and he was waving to me down on level one. And he asked me if he could get down there. I said, I don't think that's my in my control. Yeah, uh, usually it would there be. There was not a person within 200 metres of where me and Purdy were. I don't know if getting my brother 10 gin and tonics deep uh, down no. to that seat would have been smart. But um, yeah, so it was good to win the Twin Waters Cup. Yeah, it was. I've said, as I think we mentioned last week, I've said more casual, how young mates and g'day mates uh, on my walks to and from the dinner room to Collingwood and North players and I had in my entire life up to this point. So to now do it, having won, uh, makes it a little bit easier. I'm very happy with it. Um, another thing going on here is the table tennis. Yep. Well, that's a shambles. Can we yeah, talk it about is a that? shambles. We've started the doubles tournament. When I say we, Shannon Burns, uh, our welfare manager who was on an earlier podcast, mm. started the t uh, a doubles tournament. And the thing with doubles is it gets people involved that shouldn't be involved in the table tennis tournament. Yeah. And therefore don't play their games. So that's what we've we've had it open for about a week and a half and there's been about four to five games played. Yeah, me and James Harms partnered up and we're James Harms and I. I but yeah. Yep. Wow. Mark the day. What's the time? <laughs> 10.16, the 20th of August, Thursday. Yep. I don't even think you knew that that was the truth. You just had a stab in the dark there. I'm not sure you could explain to me why that's the case. But yes, James yep. Harms and I partnered up and played a game, night one of the competition. Yep. And we're still waiting for our round. It's been that week well, and a half. We, we are your round two matchup, myself and Jaden Hunt. Yeah, and that's a joke because Max Gorn has been injured, for those who don't know at home. And I'm pushing very hard because he's got a he's a backhand. He's got a good backhand. And I want to basically disqualify him well, through I injury. Well, I my game last night. You played last I played night? I Spargo and Sparrow. Okay. Um, How was that? Say that name 10 times. Spargo and Sparrow. How'd you go? Yeah. Uh, we won 21-8 both sets. Wow. So that is... Consistent. Yeah, absolute smashing. Okay. Um, obviously, Jaden's the star. I'm more like your Bob Bryan. Mm -hmm. um, just good doubles player. Get me on a singles court. I tend to struggle, but doubles, I'm right up there. And, and Hunty's like... Yeah, tennis chat. Like, almost like... Okay, tennis very, chat. Very good singles player. But is that the one you've been tweeting? Can struggle. No, that, John Isner's my boy. John Isner's We should get tweet. him on the podcast. That would be me. Mad Melbourne supporter. Is he? Yes. Wow. Uh, only because I told uh, him to be. Sure. Um, sure. Now, I just wanted to fill you in on another thing regarding biscuits. Um, Love it. Every Tuesday night, uh, there's a TV show called Wentworth. It's in season seven or eight. I've watched every season, every episode. Um, and there's only one other person in this camp who does that, and it's Nathan Jones. Okay. So I go to his every Tuesday night uh, with his wife, Jerry. The kids are usually asleep, although yep. I woke him up uh, by the way I came into the door last Tuesday. Um, and we watch Wentworth, which is, uh, it's great. It's Australian drama. Yep. Uh, Supporting local business. Female, female prison. Yep. But I have to bring a, a treat with me or I thought to, like biscuits. Something Price to watch. entry. TV snacks, which sure. funny enough was the first episode I brought TV snacks. Seems fitting. Uh, and then second, I brought caramel crowns, uh -huh. uh, which is almost a better version of a Tim Tam. Well, that's a wow. That's a massive oh. call. We'll get to. We don't. Yeah, we don't need to address that, but that is a big call. Third, I brought TikToks, mm -hmm. which that's yeah, an oldie. That's a stock standard, and but unbelievable. And fourth, I brought chocolate scotch fingers, which made me think, what are the point of non-chocolate scotch fingers? Because I couldn't imagine that'd be a very boring shortbread type biscuit. Some people like it. What I'm stuck with is after I bring potentially Tim Tams next week would be my fifth. Mm -hmm. What am I bringing for episode six? Big Monte Carlo fan. Monte Carlo. Yeah, yeah right. Feel yeah. free to go on to that. I think what we've started the precedent now with is, well, I'm not sure, 
because, as I said, Shapes started their whole Instagram page off the back yeah. of our analysis. I'm not yeah. sure anyone's looking as hard as we are into this sort of stuff. So, yeah. I mean, you're talking on a, essentially a thicker biscuit than a shape. So we've gone from thin, you know, well, edible. shapes aren't shapes are more yeah like after scratch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we're yeah, sort of we're graduating watch, yeah. towards yeah biscuits and yeah. I'm not no, the, so the scope here is endless is what I'm trying to say. So we're onto something, but I mean Monte Carlo's. A, I'm a big Monte Carlo man. Yeah. Um, that's probably my that would be I would have gone. So with Nathan them, and Jerry are more down your health food part. I think episode one they had carrots and dip. Okay. And I brought TV snacks. That's well, well up, let's up, let's up cross against. Jonesy off the invite list because <laughs> we're not about that on this podcast. Next episode was celery and dip, and mm. now the dip's stopping because apparently that's not good for you. Well, you could get the, how many different dips are there? I'm getting carried away. We probably can't talk no, dips can't and biscuits dips. at the same dips. time. Dips isn't us. That's, that's not, not us joke. exactly. I just want that's Ezekiel, and that's it. You heard me pull out of that as yeah. I was going into it, so yeah. we know our limits. Uh, now the segment, uh, our boy. Our boy, our boy Ed. Yeah. Um, do you want to? We've got a. I've got a great one this week, so yeah. I'll I'll lead us off. I don't. I think the do song. We, we got to do the jingle. We have to do the jingle. Yeah, we got to do the jingle. All and right. I think we got music to it, but getting put over the top. So yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. have to just count myself. Okay. It's Eddie Langdon's. That sounded nothing like last week. <laughs> it's Eddie Sorry. Langdon. No, you say the yeah. You, hey, start again. Hey guys, that's why we uh, we have people that edit, so we can cut that one out and I'll no, start again. Playing that one. <laughs> it's Eddie Langdon. Yeah, yeah. Segment. segment. That's better. I'm not a great singer, Max. No. Yeah, I have to make yeah, me feel bad about myself on. Live podcast. Um, so, so what's, Lingers. What's, what's, what's Lingers done? Lingers, this week. Uh, I mean, you think of Ed Langdon, you think disconnected from the grid, you think... Yeah, straight away. Um, moved to Fitzroy, unplugged. He goes to lawn, he surfs on his mouth, he's in nature, he's, you know, tote bags made of grass. Like, well, he's really he's a nature guy. Yeah. Hates commerce, hates yeah. his, his roots, his business roots. Anyway, so I'm in the car with Lingers yesterday. Which is surprising interesting. He's surprising. In yeah. He's in a car. Usually he rides everywhere. Yeah. So that's that, first of all, I'm inter- I'm just interested that he's in the car. But we're driving along, and um, it's me, Vanders. It's me, Vanders, and Lingers, and it is me in that instance, not I. So yeah. I'm just checking my facts right. there. So we're in the car. It's a hyperbole, isn't it? Vanders has gone with, uh, geez, we need some petrol, yeah. and has pulled in, and it's just me and Lingers sitting in the car. And, you know, uh, I'm sort of checking a few NBA scores. Like, he's in the back. And it was a eureka moment. All of a sudden, I just hear, yes, in the back seat. Like a That's big rare. cry. That's huge rare emotion. For Very rare. And, of course, I was intrigued. And I was like, Ed, what's, what, you know, what's going on? And he then proceeded to tell me how he's bought into a tech company stock and has just had a 40% increase <laughs> on his share price <laughs> that morning. <laughs> so the market cap, he then proceeds to tell me the market cap's gone from $8 billion to $8.6 billion and how that's funneled back into the shareholder's pocket and he's thinking of selling high and buying low tomorrow. And from this reserved nature sort of uh, spirited guy has now crunching commercial numbers hard in front of me and I couldn't help myself but laugh and I think he sold out last night. The rich get richer. The rich get know. richer. So don't, don't you look at Lingers, he's grown his hair out, he's kicking goals and whatever on the field, but he's also <laughs> kicking them off the field. So let's <laughs> let's not lose sight of Ed Langdon, the commerce genius. I can't wait to get him on. Jeez, he's he's digging his heels in. <laughs> we might have to drag him kicking and screaming in here and sit him in the hot seat and really ask what's what. But congrats, Lingers. You've made yourself another, I don't know, 100 grand, 40% of 1 million that he had in there. So yep. congrats, mate. Um uh, that's a you know how many trees will we be able to plant having made a hundred grand? <laughs> you know, think of all the good you can do for the environment, mate. So last thing before we go to uh, our least favorite segment, um, yeah, the the song that we sing for for Ed Langdon's um, segment. Well, we tried to. I, is, I butchered it this morning. Is by Ed Langdon's favorite band. <laughs> He's but also what's become a bit of a cult band around yep. the football club. Yeah, um, sticky and fingers. It is sticky fingers. How to and, fly. And and song. at the moment. We're thinking maybe Sticky Fingers could give us like a shout out at some point because we listen to them before yeah. every single game. Lingus has bought seven tickets to see them live. Live. He's been to seven different seven concerts. Live seven live concerts of Sticky locations. Fingers. Seven different locations. Maybe the Sydney Mind Music Bowl twice. But so the last song 
Uh, no, the second last song before we run out is Sticky Fingers. Always. And then uh, Goody's got this other one by uh, uh, orchestra band. Yeah, that Wall's we play Fifth Symphony. Before we go out. But the Sticky Fingers ones is what gets the boys up. Mm. All we want, uh, we're just going to go quickly through this. We just, if anyone knows Sticky Fingers or has a connection to Sticky Fingers, yeah. reach out to Please the podcast. Please reach out. And I think this feeds into us taking a global step with yeah. the Instagram because if we get bigger, then we could potentially make contact with them and yeah. they sort of are more receptive. So I'm excited to get in contact with them. I'm preemptively saying we will yeah. because I've got a good feeling about We've it. We've got millions of viewers. We've got millions of viewers. All right, here we go. It's Benny Gibson. He's got the He's got the you also stuffed that first bit up. I'd like to hear a slow motion replay on yeah. previous jingles if in the past. We had a talented tech guy. If imagine, it would be nice. <laughs> Thanks Benny. for having me back. Uh, obviously, last week went very well. A lot of talk about the shapes. Yep. Um, a lot of people asked me, what are you going to rank this week? And I said, yeah. well, it's a new segment. It's not a ranking segment. Mm. So I didn't want to bring this segment into disrepute. So of we're going to go back to the news. Please. This, that's what people want. Back that's to what the they news. love. Yeah. 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 That's, that's good from you. Yeah. Let's get facts yeah. out there. Yeah. So, But it has been obviously the end of the footy festival. So the last two nights, I'm usually up every night studying my news, but um, yeah. just had a few rom-coms last few nights just to sort okay. of You're a rom-com wind man. down. I am. Yeah. 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 Um, Sweet Home Alabama last night. Great yeah, movie. Good, yeah. good flick. And a great song, Leonard Skinner. Yeah. yeah. No, we could tie that into um, the intro. Anyway, as far as actual news goes, mm -hmm. a man who's close to you, Gus, is Aaron Vandenberg. Oh, he, is this news? Well, I think this it, is it, uh, it, PR. This is PR. May have been. He reckons he, uh, he didn't mean it. Oh, Some good PR from himself. Bang so he sent a wine and a letter to Brody Mychek's wife after he actually physically sent Brody Mychek to hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the sort of person he is? Well, I think, first of all, what I would say is I'll check my mailbox for the last 20 bottles of wine that I've been owed over my six-year journey. Yeah, Danielle would be furious. Danielle's well. queuing up at the wine rack, yep. um, ready to go. So I've never seen that before in my life. Uh, and I think Vander's PR stunt. You know, mm. he's thinking, how can I look good here? It is a, it is a really good touch, is it not? It's brilliant. Yeah. I would have, uh, yeah. I mean, it's hard. It's a hard time when you get absolutely ploughed like yeah. uh, I hope it hasn't come in. from your uh, wine collection. Could have. We got a few. We got a few back home, yeah. um, but no, great touch. Very uh, thoughtful. Yeah. The and first thing he did when yeah. he got on the bus was text Brody. Yeah. Um, I think it might have been playing on his mind. Yeah, yeah, throughout yeah. the game, which is yeah, good. that's incredible. And then he still backed back into Sam yeah. Wiedemann, which was phenomenal. But he's a different player. <laughs> he's a good boot. man. I think yeah. so. He's on a different wavelength. But yeah, we love him. It was good. In terms of injury news, uh, yourself, Max, a question mark, probably. Fans weren't too worried because they got Big Prusy and yep, they were the pretty Prus. content with that as wow. a, as a ruck, that. Uh, replacement. No, no, that's, 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 I think it's that's fair. fair. It's you, just, were, you were eyeing off Sunday's practice match against the Saints. Yeah, it's just fun and games with me. I think I'm going to be um, a question mark for every game going yeah. forward, even if I'm, I've played three in a row. I yep. just feel like these injuries are going to keep everyone on their toes. Mm. Good. Uh, so Prusy left the track early yesterday with a bit of hip soreness. We're hoping he can play. Yeah, I, shot any... him. I shot him from the stands. <laughs> yeah, uh, good hit. Yeah, it was a good hit. Hit, hit, hit won't kill him, but it will keep him. Yeah, we'll keep him out for a couple of weeks, which That's is smart, good. isn't it? <laughs> um, no, look, Prusy played extremely well against Grundy. Um, English is a completely different player to Grundy. If English is playing, this podcast will probably come out and he might not be, but um, it sounds like he is. Um, so it's a genuine challenge for Prusy again if he's the one. I, again, am having a fitness test, so um, I will have a fitness test. Have you got a new injury? In. Have you got a new injury? No, 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 no new injury. So in fact, two same. recovering injuries that okay. are getting better, good. which is good. That's good to hear. If we weren't to have a Ruckman, uh, who do you see? I don't think we that? need to address this. I think it's uh, James Harms. <laughs> I reckon it's Joel Smith. You reckon? Yeah. Do you remember he's Jimmy Harms having a run in the... Yeah, he had a centre bounce against Mad Jack Dore and Harms, he ended up worse. He's still got a knock on his shin from two years ago. <laughs> well, Timmy English is actually in a bit of doubt himself. He's got a bit of ankle soreness. Yep. Uh, as far as the Bulldogs go, Josh Bruce will likely be back. Is that speculation or...? This is, yeah, speculation. Okay. Speculation. 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 Did you see speculation worked with the, my fixture? Yeah, it was I bang it. on. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see if your so speculation, speculation works. Quite correct. All right, well, yeah. Josh Bruce could return. I'd say he'd return. He was managed last week. He actually has a good record against Melbourne. He's kicked his third most career goals against us. Just you might want to let the defenders know. Yep. Um, All right, good we'll, let, we'll let Oscar know. Yep. Uh, Hayden Crozier, Jason Johannesson could return. Steph, our video producer, just wanted me to bring up the Jason Johannesson. Is anyone going to send out an Insta story to him similar to Tom Bug and Jack? We'll, we'll actually get Tom Bug. We'll message Buggy. Yeah. yeah. Actually, so. Buggy could be a great person to get 
on the podcast. That's watch this space. Get you the big bugwire on. You know what? We could even can who we got planned for later this. No, no, we'll keep him. He's good. He's your mate. I yeah. think you'd well, burn some bridges well. there. Yeah. Well, no, he's, you got him in. So you, uh, what I'm saying is, you would have to then. We'll look at Buggy. Yeah, could be the secret weapon for us this weekend. We That's could. about it. Uh, a little bit of speculation, a little bit of news, no ranking. That wasn't too bad. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't mind that. Short and, sh- short and sweet. Grandma Gibson will like that. Yeah, very she good. Will. Thanks, Benny. Thanks to our co-principal partner and podcast sponsor, Zurich Insurance. For over 100 years, they've been insuring the people and things you truly love. And just like you, they truly love footy and they truly love the Ds. Welcome back to Captain's Run. Uh, we've got a very special guest this week, Angus. Yes, super special. Um, we do like bringing people in. Because we do a lot of phone calls, but the mm-hmm. chance to get someone in, uh, we've only really had Stephen, May, and uh, Shannon, Shannon Burns. Burns as the two we brought in. So in elite company. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, uh, Indigenous round this week. Uh, we are wearing a jumper this week that is designed by one of our very own, which is very exciting. Um, we have Neville Jetta. Nev, welcome to the Captain's Run. Captain's Run. Thanks for having me, boys. You've heard great things about the podcast? Yes, I have. Yeah. A lot of great things. Shapes? Where do you sit in the Shapes front? Because obviously the last week we went oh, global. That's, right? that's obviously got you guys trending. Yep. yep. Um, yeah, Shapes. I, do, I don't mind them, but I'm more of a... Milk arrow, sort of plainish biscuit. He's joking. The, fam- the family is sort of biscuits. If the artists people there listening, he's joking. Controversy. <laughs> a, good, a good cup of tea, <laughs> a bit of dippage. But, but if, you um, to, if you had to pick a shape, you're picking barbecue, aren't, aren't, aren't you? Uh, barbecue or chicken, I'd say. Yeah, chicken. Yeah, chicken. 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 Yeah. Chicken's, chicken's good. Chicken the guy. most hate we had from people out there were the, were the chicken lovers. Yeah, the, the, chicken, chicken, the chicken people are a passionate, yeah. a passionate people, so yeah, we, we understand that. All right, yeah. anyway, that's enough shape talk. We're yep. talking you mm-hmm. yep. uh, to start. Um, been out of the side last couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been noticed you you don't look your your speedy self. Jeepers! Um, you do you are. Thanks. <laughs> you should have gone hard at him early. Whack. No, not a Max not and I. The, Max not and I in the games. Oh, I mean you, around around the hub. What do you mean? He's, he's Nev runs everywhere usually. Yes. Is that okay. Wow. Yeah, okay. Oof. That's Nev, I'm, I'm sorry. I want to no, apologise on I, my behalf. I, his game, his last game he played, which was against Brisbane Lions. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yep was against Charlie Cameron, and yep. he got the chocolates. Yep. So the last game he played, he got the chocolates. Uh-huh. Um, obviously hard to get back into a winning team for both mm-hmm. me and you, but hopefully um, there is a chance to get back in the Melbourne side because it looks like it's quite fun to be in there at the moment. Yeah. Fun's probably not the word. Fun comes off the back off of the working back of, hard. So yeah. um, that is the, the message we want to get across. Yep. Yep, yep, um, yep. More importantly, you have uh, the jumper. J- jumper time, yeah. Yep. Yes. Love yep. the way it looks, just off... Just off the first sort of site, we haven't really played in it yet, so I'm not sure what it looks like on the whole team. But just seeing you model it, Nev, you've got a future in modelling potentially. But <laughs> you want Mental to talk model. us through how you went about designing it? I mean, obviously, there's a deeper meaning that not everyone might have heard about. So um, how you went about designing it and mm. what it sort of means to you and, and the club? Yep. Um, club asked me uh, late last year. Didn't have anyone in mind to design the jumper just yet. And um, Wheels, Matty Whelan sort of threw it to me and said, would you like to do it? I've done a uh, previous Guernsey in the AFLX Indigenous All Stars. Mm-hmm. Um, turned out pretty good. Um, sort of surprised so myself. Right yep, that's all right. <laughs> surprised myself. We like it. Um, right. But yeah, I, I said no. Nope, I'm happy to have a crack, and if, if it doesn't turn out right, get someone else, <laughs> yep. uh, and I'll tell you straight away. But um, yeah, the the story um, that I wanted to tell was one that uh, probably took a bit of time. I wanted to make sure that the jumper was right um, to be able to not only uh, represent me and my family and my culture, but be able to bring people on a journey. So it was it came out better than expected, the art piece, um, but then the story that the boys were able to put together definitely um, mm. takes people on a journey. Got to a point where it gave me goosebumps and I was like, yep, I think that's, that's a video done, but um, to be able to tell my culture, um, put on an art piece, but then put it on the Melbourne Football Club jumper, so I'm very honoured. So it's got the names of uh, the players that have... Yep played uh, for Melbourne Football Club. Mm-hmm. Um, some great names. One that we will see next week as well, uh, mm-hmm. Liam Jara. Liam Jara, yep. I dare say he's going to be the Alice Springs game potentially watching. Might not be able to get crowd. I don't know. I don't know what the go is, but... Yeah, I'm not too I'm sure, sure but I, I, I think we might get some crowd. It might yep. be limited, though. And it's got the language uh, groups on mm-hmm. the front at the bottom? Bottom, yes. Yeah. Yep. And what so, language group are you? Uh, Balalang Wheelman. And so, whereabouts is that? Southwest, Western Australia. Yeah. Um, Gary. God's country. <laughs> Angus, God's country. Angus would know. Australian boy myself. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the, the language groups are on there to, to represent all Indigenous uh, language groups. So, um, 
a bit of education process there yep. um, for not only uh, to, for Indigenous people to go on and, and feel uh, proud about their language group being represented, but also for non-Indigenous people to go on and say, oh, okay, well, where am I from? What country did I grow up on, um, live on, work on? So it's definitely an education jumper in yep. the sense that I wanted to sort of put it out there, get people thinking about it. And the and the top half where the red is mm -hmm. is where your chief design was, was probably. That's probably where you can judge the most with your design yes. work. Yep. Um, it's come out. It looks unreal. It's come out good. It's Have you done much good. done much art before, or is it something that you've just sort of picked up when Wheels asked you to? No, I've done a bit. So, yep. like I said in the video, um, I used to walk home from school, mm -hmm. walk into my family's house, and people were painting at the back. So, um, it's big, been a big part of my life yep. uh, and my family's life in our culture so to be able to tell a story is, is hard in artwork sometimes but um i nailed it somehow <laughs> yeah it looks unreal i don't but know nah, the jumper the designer top half you got the circles that's the meeting places that's the tribal groups the, yeah. the language groups um you can even go on to being like to say the football clubs the people within football clubs and how we're connected both land sky um waterways um, and to be able to have that connection come as one and get a great understanding of each other, who we are, where we're from, goes a long way. And it's the same on the football field. If we don't sort of come together yeah. and, and stay connected and, yeah, things go pear-shaped. Yeah, well, we love it. We're, um, we're very lucky. Uh, and one of the things I am extremely lucky to be drafted for is uh, learning more about Indigenous culture. Mm -hmm. Um, and I potentially wouldn't have learnt as much as I have uh, by being drafted and your story as well as, um, like we say, Liam Jarrah's story, Toby Bedford's story, they're all, they're all very unique and different. Um, and one of the cool things we were able to do was watch a movie last night, uh, yep. In My Blood It Runs, um, which is an uh, uh, Indigenous story following a kid, uh, Do, do, do Yarn. Do I'm gonna back your. Do you, do you? I'm gonna let you do the pronunciation. It's a document. What is it again? What is it? There was a name? soft J in there. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> do one. Do one. Do one. Yep. Uh, following his his sort of life around as an 11 year old boy, um, and we're able to get the whole team in there uh, to watch it, and I'm I'm sure you have the partners, same opinion partners as, me. as well. Partners. partners yeah. I, I left pretty moved. Mm. Um, and finding another layer of education around Indigenous culture that I potentially didn't know. Yeah. Um, before I watch that. Um, so you want to talk us more about the, the, the decision to, to put a movie on for the boys. Um, and the background of that is just such a strong message for, in, for Indigenous culture. Yeah, it's obviously the round every year is to be able to celebrate Indigenous culture. Um, and the other aspect, aspect is to educate. Um, and it's a great opportunity to do that in, in many different ways. And um, we always get up and talk as, as Indigenous players in the football club. And like you said, coming in you wouldn't have learnt as much as you would have if you weren't at a footy club and um, putting an education process um, in a different way it just gets people thinking differently. A movie last night was, was something myself and Maddie Whelan thinking about like a movie would be great but we had to pick the right one, yeah. the one that's going to have the most impact, get people thinking um, to be able to yeah, not only uh, think about culture in a different way, Indigenous culture, um, but also take them on a journey and, and to reflect a little bit. Yeah. Well, it, it, it struck home with me mainly um, because of the, the education uh, mm. element in it, uh, in the actual movie um, about what Indigenous uh, kids get taught mm. um, and get taught from a white educator. Yep. Um, I mean, it's, it's similar to how I grew up probably uh, in the middle of Victoria. Um, I grew up with just learning the, the white education mm -hmm. around um, how Australia was built. Um, and I think that's why it was such a good movie to pick because it, it would have struck home with every single person in that room. Mm. Um, yeah, and Stephen May followed up with a great text last night yep. to the boys. Um, and it just, it struck home to me that that that, uh, that movie has a lot in it. And our group is well and truly supporting mm. um, the Sir Doug Nichols round, which I mean would put a lot of pressure on you this round because you do uh, you are a senior figure in the mm. AFL for Indigenous culture, and you're on every billboard that I've seen. Um, yeah, a bit too much. Yeah. That modelling, Nev. I'm <laughs> telling you, there's a future in it for you. Oh. Do you feel the pressure at all? Um, oh, not pressure, responsibility. Yeah, it comes with it. So um, it's it's sort of ingrained in our life, really. We understand if we're going to get anywhere, we can't do it on our own. Yep. We need people 
to be our ally um, and to give them tools or help them through education to help us, um, we understand we're going to get there quicker. Yeah, your big message to me uh, every time we talk about it is always people look to you mm. and they look for you to, to be the spokesman for Indigenous culture, but it's more powerful when it comes from someone like myself and Angus, yep. um, which is what I've taken from every conversation we've had. Um, so yeah, I can understand the responsibility that you have and mm. everyone always looks for Nev to say, to, to say the right thing and um, you can only imagine that's the same for other Indigenous leaders around the mm. community. We have an AFL and... Um, I think you're sharing an AFL uh, advertisement with Daniel Rioli and Michael Walters. Yes, potentially. Yep. Yeah, I am. Um, yeah, there's a there, there's a speedy three. Mm. Very fast. Speedy three. Yeah, I, I Very think Nev's fast. At the trio. bottom of that list. That's twice I've commented on his speed in this Jeez, podcast. Nev, but it's up uh, against Michael Walters and Daniel Rioli. When we when we get on there, like, <laughs> pick the bone. When we play those guys, who do you want on them? <laughs> Nev exactly. Yeah, Nev Jedi. Yeah, right. Nev Jedi. Yeah. I thought I'd speak early. I thought I'd speak early, but I've come back to Nev Yeah, okay. No, I just wanted to clear that up. Um, well, that's. I mean, we've we've yeah. done a, we've done a good ten there. That's more than what Burnsy and Steve May got. Yeah, Look, um, probably probably the best ten I've had. Anyway, thanks for coming <laughs> thanks on. Thanks very much for coming. No uh, good thanks. luck with uh, your body. Yep. Um, and hopefully we see you back and myself. Well, I don't know if you do hope soon. that. You went hard at him early, but I can say well, hope to see I'm, you back soon. Nev. He was. Yeah. Was he quick? Oh, don't go back t- on your words there. <laughs> All I'm saying, like on the weekend, if Max is tapping down to me, I want to play in the midfield. Yeah. I'm going to speak to Matty Egan. You played in the midfield in the scratchy on the way. Put me back in the midfield a bit more than 10 minutes this time. Okay. I'll well, be, uh, yeah. Look forward getting to seeing Getting on Gus Gitts weekly. <laughs> Good man. Thanks, Nev. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, boys. Thanks to our co-principal partner and podcast sponsor, Zurich Insurance. For over 100 years, they've been insuring the people and things you truly love. And just like you, they truly love footy and they truly love the Ds. We're back. Captain's run with Angus Brayshaw. Maxi Gorn, uh, you've pulled some strings. I know the man we've got on now, it's our favourite segment, has been very busy. Yep. And uh, we're very happy to have the rat, Matt Jones, on our podcast. Rat, are you there? Matthew. Well, I am here. How are we, fellas? We, we are well. That was Angus's first time doing an intro. What are your thoughts? I think... Uh, you didn't really give me much of a rap, did you? Yeah, I'll, I would have ran with uh, 60 odd games, fourth in the best and fairest. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah maybe that's maybe I set you up. wanted. Maybe I that's set Max I up. Yeah. I set Max up to come in with those <laughs> those figures. That's a that's the sort of chemistry we got on this podcast. Oh, beautifully. Thank now, you, Angus. You're joining names such as uh, Mackenzie, Pedersen, Garland, <laughs> Burns, Fitzpatrick, Fitzpatrick. Some seriously oh good my names. God. <laughs> um, how do you feel so, about joining that so elusive this is, group? Um, so this is what uh, episode six, seven, is it? Yeah, it's around that seven, I'd say. Yeah, we lost count. So I'm the seventh in. I'm the I'm the seventh from the like from the top. No, don't don't talk yourself up, mate. We've had cancellations. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I've been trying to get Jordan Lewis since day one. I just can't get onto him. Yeah, he's, he's a loser. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's fair. Um, so yes, yeah, so we'll talk about your footy first. So you, how many 60, 60 what games? 61? 60, 61, and, and uh, yep. correct me if I'm wrong, your first 50 were, were very quick. Um, I think you had two seasons where you played almost every game. Um, correct, and, yeah. And you got That's right. fourth in the best and fairest in your first season of AFL football. That's right. Came fourth and uh, Dean Turlick came third. You got beaten by Dean Turlick. Yes, uh, that makes me feel sick every every time I say it. But yeah, <laughs> yeah he, he somehow finished third, which is incredible, really, isn't it? Who won the B and F that year? Was it Jonesy? Yeah, Jonesy. And Jonesy followed by Cole Garland, I reckon, came second. Yeah, right. So the B and F in the top four involved Garland, Turlick, and, and Jones. Jeez. How, how do we how do we go that year? <laughs> where, 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 uh, where did we finish on the ladder? I reckon I reckon we might have won three. <laughs> yeah, we're lucky. That's right. That's right. That's 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 not too bad. Um, right. And you finished up uh, at the end of 2016? The end of 2016, yep. Yeah. That's right. I got, I got the raspberry sauce, got the old tap on the shoulder, and that yeah. was it. Yeah. <laughs> was, that, was, that, was that P. Ruse that did that? Uh, no, Ruse, Ruse pretty much after the last game, he was gone. He, he packed yeah. his office the day after, he was gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so it was actually Goody and a few of the other boys in there. So. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and since then you've been you've been back at South Croydon. Yeah, my local footy club, mate, the South Croydon Bulldogs, which is which has been good. Uh, you know, 
you know the club down there extremely well after we won the flag you pretty much carried on like you won it yeah I felt like I did win the flag that day I drank out of the cup actually <laughs> oh jeez <laughs> that's yeah. carry on you want to do that if you don't play no you aren't that is carry on that's carry that on disgusting Angus he had, he, had a, he had a South Korean scarf on and was drinking out of the cup <laughs> that's terrible that is terrible it was my first taste of success yeah true true <laughs> now Rat uh, oh, along, yes. alongside uh, South Croydon you've got the Matt Jones electrical up and going Yes, M Jones Electrical. Yeah, I've been I've had that going for pretty much since I finished, so three yep. uh, or four years, and um, yeah, things are things are going well nicely. Well, I'm not sure how nicely they could be going. You've done Christian Matraka's house, and the people here are dying to know. So we all know what tracks like on the field. What's he? How's he to work with in a professional context off the field? Uh, Christian's got no idea when it yep. comes to any, anything to do with trades. Um, <laughs> He pretty much just said to me, "You do whatever you want." So, so, how's that been I've for just, you? I've just gone, just gone to ex, just extreme levels. I've put a million lights in, and um, <laughs> I'm going to charge him accordingly. So, it's worked out well. Has he paid? No, he hasn't paid, which I'm a little bit nervous about because I know you guys are on a on some sort of pay cut. So yes. I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so you, he has said, do whatever you do want. whatever you want, and you've what you've put a couple of lights underneath benches that don't need to be there. You've got all automatic oh, lights in the stairwell. 100%. He he really only needs probably fifty odd down lights, but I've probably put in about ninety, which is fair. <laughs> Are they self timed as well? Times are time, times are tough down here, boys. Yeah. yeah. So you got to make you when you get someone like a tracker who's going to win the brown low. Yeah, you, make, you right. make the most of it. You got to milk exactly. the ca- milk the cash cow, which is uh, <laughs> sounds like exactly what you're doing. Uh, That's right. I, I am. like that a lot. Um, you, it, times are tough. Talk to me about your isolation at the moment. Um, five kilometres. Uh, you live where do where do you live? Out Croydon. That means you can't go yeah. anywhere. But Croydon, <laughs> you must be struggling. <laughs> oh mate, it's it's pretty tough. I'll be honest. We've just all you can do is pretty much walk. You can just go for a walk. That's it. Yeah, and you got the two kids, um, and they probably need as much outdoor time as possible. Mm. Yeah, yeah, a couple of kids. So we just chuck them in the pram and we go for a walk or we'll go for a bike ride. But apart from that, we're not really doing much. But uh, I think the numbers are start, starting to drop. So yeah, lucky, hopefully we're going to be out of this soon. Lucky enough, your uh, your work continues. Although five people at a work site um, would get interesting at times. The electrician probably gets shafted more than the chippies, I'd say. Yeah, we're sort of in that little battle at, at the moment, just trying to organise with builders how we can get on and if we can get on so we're just that's what we're going through at the moment which is hard but hopefully it's all over soon yeah hopefully how do you balance those responsibilities uh, with your self-anointed king of the wingers club the king of the wingers club I haven't actually spoken to many people about this for a couple of years but um, I used to love I used to love that club I I mean I don't think the people that were in the club knew they were in the club yeah but you know Andrew Gaff um, <laughs> Tom Tom Scully, you know yep. your your, uh, your Sam Gibsons, you yep. know these sort of guys. They're all in there. Yeah, yep. the, the king of the king of it. Your steel side bottoms was was he was steel side bottoms. He yeah. was the self appointed. Uh, yeah, Maston was in there. Maston. Now we've got uh, we've got Ed Langdon and Aaron Vandenberg. Um, what are your thoughts? Yes. What are your thoughts? Are now? you happy as um, the self appointed king of the wingers club with the wingers that we have? I'm extremely happy. I mean, Vanders to me doesn't really come across as a winger. He's more of a bull. Yeah, we can't have wingers winning contested ball, can we? Yeah, that, no, no, that's not that's not part of our part of our job. So <laughs> I don't like when those sort of guys go out onto the wing because it it makes us think that we have to do it too, and that's yeah. not yeah. our role. Well, yeah. So what about that? You'd be a big Ed Langdon fan then, wingers. <laughs> oh, I love him. He yeah. runs him. away from Absolutely contested ball. He, he runs away he from the good. contested nut, which would be right. That's page one. Of, that's page one of your leaflet book, isn't it? When you hand it out. Jeez, that is that is brutal feedback. <laughs> well, we, 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 we don't tell that to his face. No, of course no, not. Don't behind it's only behind his back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. No, I do like it. I do like it. Yeah, All right, last good. last thing we'll touch on. Um, yes. You were, uh, for those that don't know, we are we are quite good mates, myself and uh, Matt Jones. Yep. Matt Jones and I, sorry. Yeah, that's all uh, right. And he was best man at my wedding uh, in January. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I had a Bucks Just. party in October, which you declined to attend, which was quite interesting. Well, let's not, we won't get into that. We won't on get air. into that. But uh, Jonesy, I, I do want to ask you one question that's been uh, on my mind a little bit around that Bucks party. Um, yes. Is a, you, apparently you had all this great stuff organised, all sorts of games and activities and uh, T-shirts, and it was going to be the best three days ever. Um, the the day one got a, got away from us a little bit. Um, I think it's fair <laughs> to got say. Got big on us. <laughs> got, got big on us 
real quickly and then you seem to cancel the rest of the trip and it just turned into going back to the same pub three days straight. I want to know what you had planned. Was was there something fun? Well, the first question I'll ask is, did you have fun? I, I had fun, but I, I, I would like to know what my best man had planned before the, it got big on us. I, I'd also like to know, Rat, uh, for the record. <laughs> Actually, oh. is it, it, this, yeah, is, this is a PG show, so make sure you you leave it in the, in the, in the PG in the of P, Play in the V, mate. It's in, in the V for now. But, uh, of course. No, nah, look, we had um, me and the other grooms and had a couple of things planned. We had a little... A little, uh, a little sort of a pub golf game organised. Yeah, right. I'm not sure. I think we woke up the next day and we weren't feeling overly great, <laughs> as, no, as you yeah. can expect. And yeah. Somehow we just ended up at the same pub that we were the day before and we did the same thing the following day. <laughs> we had three days of the exact same thing. <laughs> I don't see the problem with that, though, man. <laughs> well, I had fun. Well, that's all but, that matters, isn't it? But I just, I just that's wanted. Right. To, I had a question that had been in my mind for a long time. Yeah. I wanted to know what I was actually going to do, and it turns out it was pub golf. Okay. So I reckon, pub, I reckon well, you I made the right it, call. Was it, was it pub golf, or there was some? I think there was a bike ride as well. I've, I've, I've even gone to the point of organising bikes. So I don't know what the hell we do. <laughs> well, so what happened to the bikes? <laughs> Well, we pay for them, but we just never actually pick them up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, so we got some bikes in Queenstown that we should use one day. Maybe we should go there for footy. Yeah, they're still year. waiting for us, I heard. So. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you might as well. Might as well. Uh, anyway, so you're playing, playing footy this year? No, that's been canned. Like footy. <laughs> yeah, footy's been canned. Um, that's, come on, do your research. Well, were, you, lockdown, mate. were you going to play this year? I was going to play this year, yeah. It was going to be my last year, so I reckon I'll probably go one more now. Well, you can't, you can't finish off that, can you? No, we can't. Um, so I'll, so probably go, I'll probably go again if we can, if it actually happens. One more. Know. How old are you? I'm 32. Yeah, you got to, at least a couple more in you. You're a you're a, you're a fit man. You're the king of the wingers. I'm a I'm a fit outside player. We can we we can probably go to 38. <laughs> <39. laughs> oh, that's oh, great. Um, all right. Well, I've taken a lot of your time. You're on site. At- actually, can I just can I just ask um, Angus a question? Sure, <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure, can, Matt. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I was just wondering, Gussie, what I've, I've been thinking, what are, what are Max's pre-game huddle speeches like? Yep. Yeah, that's good. What, uh, well, what's his what's – because his, most captains have their same go-to message. What What's – What's he run with? He's an inspirational leader, uh, Max. Uh, yep. He plagiarises heavily from the Book of Goodwin, so we've got a few points that we like to go through from Goody before the game, and Gorney will hit, hit those up again so they're fresh in our mind, but then we'll find something deep within himself and uh, we'll really rouse the troops with a... Matt, know, Matt I, had a, I had a while there where I was caught in a bit of a... Um, uh, I don't know what word I want to use here. Um, Neither, I've no idea. I've no idea what <laughs> word you want to use. Well, I can't help either. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, anyway, I was caught out because the Gold Coast game was our first game in the hub, and I played it up as a pretty big game. I said, this is one of the biggest games for the football club. That's what I said. And then, Gold Coast. Yeah, but, well, Gold Coast were 5-2 yeah, or something. As I said, they were, they were rousing playing, speeches. They were playing Jonesy. really good football, yeah. and it was our first game, and we just lost to Geelong and Richmond, and we needed to win the game. So I ran up a pretty strong message. He went hard. Anyway, we won that game, and and then the next week, I doubled down. I said, "You, I said you thought last week was big. This week is the biggest week." And we won that game. And I did it three yeah. weeks in a row. Hyperbole. I, I went again. A lot of hyperbole from Max. And then when we got to Brisbane, I'm like, "This is the uh, don't, don't don't say." I said, "Don't think the last two weeks were big. This week yeah. is the biggest week of oh, the football." Club. How many times can you say it? Well, I, I, luckily enough, I got injured. And I couldn't yeah. say it anymore. So I'm, I've got to come up with something yeah. different. Yeah, yeah. As I said, really like from the heart, rousing stuff. Um, it's all good. It's all good. He's he's been good with the speeches. So, well, no, well, Jonesy, it's always it's always one of those things that captain. It's a bloody tough role. Yeah, I yes. threw it to Harmsy before the um before Delegate. one of the games out of that oval uh, against the Crows. Yeah, he's and a I threw it to Harmsy, and Harmsy didn't take his mouth guard out. Oh, that was funny. <laughs> oh, no. And you know how big his teeth are. You know how big <laughs> James Harmsy's teeth are. He said. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the teeth of a horse. Did you give him? Surely you gave him some sort of warning, or, or not? You just, you just no, I, I told him when we were going out. He said, "Yeah, throw it to me. It'll be good." So I threw it to him and he just forgot to take his mouth guard out and after we won uh, the spirits are high and Christian Petraka was trying to pretend uh, that it was James Harms in the oh, speech oh, come <laughs> it was on. so funny oh jeez <laughs> poor James uh, Harms uh, anyway that's the last time uh, we'll let a guest ask a question I'm not a big fan of that well you liked it when no, Ham- that's fair. you liked yeah. it when Hamish Blake did it 
Yeah, but um, favoritism, right? Yeah, that's favoritism. Oh, <laughs> that's poor. That makes me sick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matthew, get back to your um, uh, what your you, lights. What, yeah, what are you doing? Putting in putting lights, lights and in. putting in some powerpoints. Um, you still got no idea. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'll see you when I'm back in Victoria, if we're allowed to. Thanks, fellas. All the best. See, see you, mate. mate. Good man. Right. That was the Rat Jones. Uh, that I actually I forgot to um. I forgot to ask him if he still goes for D's, but I do know the answer to that. He does. Okay. Do you know um, his favourite player is? Uh, my gut feel Lingers? is it will be a winger. So I, I dare then. say it's Ed Langdon. Yeah. <laughs> That's another <laughs> episode of The Captain's Run uh, yeah. with Angus Brayshaw, sponsored by Zurich and Arnott Shapes. We'll get on the Instagram. We'll fire that up and uh, get around that so we can get some real traction. Yeah, we'll, in the... we'll, we'll put up a post today. Yeah, we're movers and shakers now, um, so we'll, we'll put something We'll repost up. it on both of our stories. Yeah. There's a few people there. Um, and we'll go from there. Tune in next week. I'm already guessing we're going to have Tom Bug, yeah. although he is a big dog in PR. He's so tough we to get may hold need of. to book him in Go tonight. through his management and go get, through get his management and get him in tonight. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Cheers.